And hello YouTube, so this is Thomas Judge back once again with another video as part of my tutorial series. This one's called Tutorial 3, How to Clean Up Your Comic. And it relates specifically to cleaning up the digital image of a comic. In my previous tutorial I talked about how you would get that, how you would slice up a comic and scan it in. And today we're going to be talking about how to clean up that scan so it's at a printable level. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. We're going to start off in Microsoft Photos. Uh, which is a standard free app that comes with any Windows, laptop or desktop. And I'm going to look at a couple of images I scanned for previous um, custom prints that I've done. So to start off with here, you see the tools at the top that I'm showing you here. Um, and this is a picture from an Avengers issue. So I'm going to talk you through the tools that I use for Microsoft Photo because some of it is actually really, really useful. Um, and then later on in the video, we're going to transition to GIMP, which is a different image manipulation bit of software. We'll start off with cropping it. Now you'll see here on the image, there's a huge amount of empty space around the image. Um, I've mentioned before in previous videos that one of the benefits of printing your own comics is you can get it to be full bleed, which means edge to edge printing. Now bleed is a term we're gonna come across again later in the next video where I talk about sizing your comic correctly. But to start with here, you can see all I'm doing is I'm just quickly cropping it in and I'm making sure that actually it's edge to edge. Now, when you're paying to have something custom printed, the last thing you want is just loads of extraneous space for no real reason. It's an expensive waste of time, really. So here, I've just cropped it in. You saw how I did it. I picked the tool, I dragged the lines, I saved it in, and that's that image cropped. Job done. Um, clicking onto the next image. Again, this is from an issue of Avengers, Volume 2 from the Heroes Reborn run. Uh, as some of you will know, I've already custom printed and custom bound this. And again, looking at cropping that, you see there a huge amount of white space and waste around the images after I scan them. So all I'm doing here, I'm just pulling those guidelines in so they actually go edge to edge with the color, which means that when I print this image, it'll be edge to edge. It'll be what they call full bleed, which will mean the image will take up the entire area of the page uh, without any sort of wasted white or black space around it. So again, just dragging it in with the anchor lines. I'm doing it quite sloppily here, and you'll see why later on in the video, because actually Microsoft Photos isn't my go-to tool for rescaling images or for cropping them. I actually think it's a bit of a messy amateurish tool for that. But I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what it is, how I use it, and why I don't use it for further stuff. So again, here you've got an image with a huge amount of wasted space. It tends to be quite a thing in the 90s. It tends to take quite a lot of effort with the art and the framing and the panels. But then if that didn't actually track with the right size of the page, a lot of publishers have left a lot of extraneous white space around it. You can leave it there if you want for pace or for setting the tone of the book. But I personally like to have my stuff full bleed um, rather than anything else. Now you'll see here I'm jumping into an adjustments menu. And this is the thing that Microsoft Photos is great for. What it allows you to do is really quickly, really easily change the settings for the lightness or rather the brightness of your image. And you can see all the sub settings there, which to be honest, I'm not gonna mess around with in these videos. And then also it does a series of things reg regarding the color. So to start with here in the lightness, you'll see there I'm making the image a bit brighter because when it scanned it was a little bit dark. And now I'm looking down at the color settings. And color contrast is a really important thing. It's actually kind of a matter of taste. A lot of comics nowadays are quite super saturated with color. I like having it um, quite bright and colorful, especially for 90s comics. So you'll see there, I'm moving it up and increasing the color just a little bit. Um, and then the other two settings down there, the only other one that I really mess with is the one about clarity or sharpness where I tend to sharpen up the images a little bit. Um, I would highly recommend you play about with these settings yourself and get a feel for what you like and what image quality you want in your custom prints. I'm gonna move on to the next image now. This is a Fantastic Four image, again, from the Heroes Reborn bind that I did, and feel free to check out that video for more details. Um, and again here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a quick uh, adjust of it. Now you'll see there, this is one of those single issue pages with an odd little black box at the top. It's kind of a printing artifact from single issues back in the 90s. It makes it really annoying when you scan them in, to be honest, but we'll touch on those later. So you'll see there, I've cropped that in. Because cropping that black box away is probably the easiest way of getting rid of it. 
to be honest. I'll jump back into that image now um, and you'll see here that I'm going to again look at adjusting the various facets. So I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. I could make it darker if I want, but I prefer to have it lighter. And I'm going to accentuate the colour profile um, because I'd prefer to have it a little bit more colourful. In some comics, perhaps I might want to have it as a slightly uh, more muted thing, but that's up to me. And then again, I am making it crisp. You'll see there if I reduce the clarity, it gets really fuzzy and blurry. Feel free to do that if you're printing a dream sequence or something and you want to do that. But I tend to make them a little bit crisper. And like I said, I think Microsoft Photos is actually the easiest, simplest tool to do that because it's got so many presets and so many easy to use options for that, that although it's not great at a lot of things, it is actually really good for that. Uh, you'll see here, moving on to another Fantastic Four image. Again, we've got a little black box at the top. So again, I'm going to lazily, quickly drag that down. And uh, there you are, that's cropped, great. Let's jump into the adjustments. Uh, what I'm gonna do here, this seems quite bright actually, so I'm gonna uh, relax the color slightly and then make it a little bit lighter. And you'll see there now, it's actually not quite so gar garish, not quite so bright, rocky orange. Um, like I say, it's not always a case of you wanna increase the color or increase the brightness or anything. You want to do it so it suits the look of what you want. And part of that is gonna be down to the quality of the scanner that you're using once you've scanned in the original pages. Uh, final page here I'm gonna show you is from Fantastic Four issue two, that's Giganto. Again, little black back, uh, box on the top of the page. And again, just quickly dragging down that bar just to get rid of that. And then messing around with the brightness, with the color and with the clarity, and then saving those. And Microsoft Photo saves those directly as uh, JPEGs. That's Microsoft Photos, and that's what I would recommend using that bit of software for. Now I'm gonna show you GIMP. Now GIMP is a much better bit of software for certain things. So again, look at the same images I started off with here. Um, this is the J. Jonah Jameson one. This bit on the left I'm showing you here are all the tools, and there's several tools there that we're gonna to need to get familiar with. Um, so to start with, what I would recommend that you do is that you go to your selection tools and you pick rectangular select. An uh, easy way of doing this that I'll be doing later on in the video is just pressing R. I'm not going to laboriously go through every single menu just to do it when there are shortcuts available. But if you click R, as it says there, you click R as a shortcut, then what you do is you basically you draw your text box there. And then by zooming in, I can now actually do a really, really accurate crop of what I want to do. So you'll see there, you've actually got guide boxes and guidelines, and I'm zooming in loads, and I can actually set it to the hundredth of a millimeter if I want. Literally, I can set it pixel by pixel. So you can crop it perfectly to the exact size that you want, um, and cutting out the exact images you want to remove, whilst keeping the vast majority of what you do want to keep. When it comes to cropping these pages, this is my preferred method of doing it. You can do it in Microsoft Windows uh, using Microsoft Photos if you want. Um, if you're just doing you know, sort of a quick and dirty custom print, quick and dirty custom bind. But if you want to take your time over it and get it just right, I would strongly recommend using the cropping tools um, in GIMP. And again here you'll see I'm doing it from the left as well. And like I say, you can zoom right in um, and do it. I'm doing it manually by dragging the boxes along with a cursor. You'll notice on the left, under the tools, there's actually uh, measurement fields where you can actually uh, put in the measurements of exactly millimeter by millimeter, pixel by pixel, what the size of that box is. And what I'm doing here is I've decided actually I'm gonna get rid of this black border as well and have just sort of a full bleed edge to edge. Don't worry when you crop it if actually what you have isn't the right proportions. Don't worry if it's not the proportions of a normal comic or a normal graphic novel or collected edition or anything like that, we're going to sort that out in the next video. Right now, all you want to do is clean up the image. Don't worry about the size of it. Speaking of the size, as I go here, you can see I'm looking at um, this particular menu here. If I click on that, you'll see it's cropped all the extraneous stuff away now. Everything outside that box has been removed. So that's my lovely, clean, printable image. Um, obviously, like I said, if I was gonna sharpen the color or do anything else, I would do that um, in photos. Here I've gone to the scale image button. You can see it's 144 DPI. 
Above it, it's got the scaling bit. Like I say, we'll cover that in the next video. For now, don't worry about it. I mean, it measures it in pixels and, and millimeters and inches and all these various things automatically for you. We'll cover that in the next video. For now, all you want to do is to make sure it's a nice, clean crop. Um, this is the other image that we started off with in, uh, in Microsoft Photos. And again, what I'm going to do is, I've, I've said, I've um, pressed R, I've drawn my box, I'm now tracking it in, making sure it's exactly almost to the pixel, almost to the millimetre, exactly up to the colour line is where I want it to be, um, and I'm cropping it accordingly. So you'll see me just zooming around the image there and doing it. It does take a little while, um, I'll be honest. Um, every single image will take a good two or three minutes if you're taking your time to actually do it properly. That means that a single issue will take you easily an hour to get up to a printable quality. Um, there you are, crop to selection. Looks good. All right. And here what I'm doing is I'm actually just overwriting it straight to a JPEG. I should have shown you that before. Um, you don't have to mess around with the formats for GIMP. You can literally, once you've done something to your image, you can overwrite it over the image in JPEG format. Uh, I'm not gonna bother doing that. And so I'm closing it there. Let's open up a new one. This is that Fantastic Four image that we looked at. And you'll see here what we're looking at is that black box on the top, which is, as I said, a printing artifact from the 90s, which I'm not keen on. And that's yet another reason to have a custom bind. Not only are you getting rid of the adverts, not only are you going full bleed, not only can you sort out your own mapping order, but you can also um, get rid of that black box there. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the crop box to get rid of the black box perfectly, rather than the lazy, and kind of sloppy thing I was doing in Microsoft Photos. Like I say, I wouldn't really recommend Microsoft Photos for that. Um, and there it is, it's just been cropped off there just by using that tool. Now if I undo that, that's not how I like to get rid of these black boxes, to be honest. If I was gonna get rid of the white border, yeah, sure, why not? But the alternative is using this tool. Now this is a clone tool, get used to this tool. It's gonna to be very, very useful. If I zoom in, you'll see there the square that is the, the uh, clone tool's sort of scope. There it is there. Now, you can make that bigger or you can make that smaller. So it really depends. There you are. It's huge. It's far too big. So I'm going to make it small again. And it really depends on what you want to use it for. There, it's too small. Too small. Okay, let's, let's, let's make that bigger. Or we'll just stick with it as it is. What I've done there is I've cloned a little bit of the white around it, and now I'm using that to paint over the black box. That's all it is. You just clone and then paint over. Um, I could have obviously just selected white and a paintbrush and painted over it, um, or I could have cropped it out. I mean, a black box that's in the white border isn't really a big deal. Who cares? No one really. But it's an important skill to know for what I'm about to show you. So, looking at this, this is an image of Giganto. Um, and here you'll notice the black box is in the middle of the sky. Now, because it's in the middle of the sky, if I do crop that out, I'll be getting rid of some of the sky and some of the actual image. So it's like, well, what should I do? And what I'm doing here, as you'll see, is I've selected the clone tool. I've actually copied a bit of the sky, and now I'm using that to wipe out the black box. So actually using the clone tool, you can actually um, repair and fix some of the artwork that's otherwise obscured by these odd little 1990s printing artifacts. So this is what I'm doing here. It's a slow process, it's a detailed process, and like I said, doing this page by page, issue by issue, takes a long time. So there you are, that's cleaned up there. If, uh, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see a tiny bit of sort of uh, weirdness or jagginess, simply because um, of what I've done. So what I'm clicking on it now is the smudge tool. And using the smudge tool, what I can do uh, is just basically smudge it a little bit so it all blends in a bit better, really. Uh, and that's all I need to do. So that's much better than cropping it in Microsoft Photos. And it's even better than cropping it in GIMP. This actually keeps you as much of the original image as possible and actually redacts and fixes it. 
Um, I recommend doing that because ultimately, no matter how good your scanner is, no matter how good your printer is, you want to keep as much of the original art as possible to stop it from having to get distorted or blown up or grainy when you do your custom print. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is what I would recommend doing to clean it up. You can see here all these um, options in the option menu about color and black and white and saturation and so on. If you want to know how to use all those, please go on YouTube and check out some GIMP tutorials. I don't really use them because I find Microsoft Photos presets are more than adequate for what I need. All right, guys, so hopefully that was useful. That was a brief tutorial on how to clean up your digital comic images. Remember, this is tutorial three. You'll need to check out tutorial zero, one, two and then three to really understand what's going on here. But once you've got your digital comic as a JPEG, page by page, this is how you clean them up. It does take a while, it is painstaking, but the rewards are worth it. And please check out the rest of my channel to see exactly what you can do in these custom prints and custom binds. Um, as always, please like, comment, subscribe, and as always, these videos are only possible by your continued support, by picking up the first episode of my episodic prose novel, No Gods or Kings, at Amazon.com or Amazon.uk. Thanks very much, guys, and as always, until next time, stay classy.